Esophageal varices are enlarged submucosal veins that can develop in patients with portal hypertension. Now they cause life-threatening esophageal bleeding, presenting in the form of massive hematemesis. Now I love teaching this topic because I've got a great way to remember it all. But first, let's just recap its pathophysiology. Liver cirrhosis makes it harder for blood to move through the portal vein. Remember, this is the vein that carries blood from the gastrointestinal tract to the liver. Cirrhosis does this by causing structural narrowing of the vessel and by contracting portal venules. This results in the backup of blood into the portal veins and its branches. This is also known as portal hypertension. As this extra pressure wants to escape, our body forms portosystemic shunts. Now these help by returning blood back to the circulation and releasing this backed up pressure. One escape route is through the collateral esophageal veins, which blow up and turn into varices. Moving on to clinical features, the presentation of varices is most often asymptomatic until they rupture. Rupturing causes life-threatening, catastrophic upper gastrointestinal bleeding in the form of hematemesis or vomiting blood. Now, the reason why I love this topic is because everything can be remembered in fours. Hematemesis has a really specific set of four differentials. These are peptic ulcers, Mallory Weiss tears, esophagitis, and non-GI bleeds. For example, a posterior nosebleed that drips into your stomach and then you vomit it back up. Outside of this, remember four key signs that might indicate someone has asymptomatic varices. Think of the A, B, C, Ds of liver cirrhosis. Ascites, jaundice causing bumblebee colored skin, caput medusae, and a patient with drinking issues. Moving on to assessment, I think the key takeaway here is that severity stratification is vital. There are multiple evidence-based scoring systems that can help you do so. Some examples include the Glasgow Blatchford Bleeding Score and the Rockall Score for Upper GI Bleeding. Now, instead of dragging this out, I'll just say that these tools use clinical and biochemical parameters to determine the severity and the urgency of endoscopy. In terms of the core investigations, specifically consider venous blood gas, cross-matching a patient's blood, and organizing an endoscopy. With that out of the way, let's discuss management options quickly. Although not a good approach in practice, I like to think about treatment options in terms of four drugs and four interventions. The medications can be remembered like the coagulation test, APTT, and the interventions rhyme with this. E triple T. The drugs include prophylactic antibiotics, as this reduces the risk of recurrent bleeding and mortality, proton pump inhibitors, especially if a bleeding peptic ulcer is a potential differential, terlipressin or ocreotide, which reduces portal pressure and splanchnic blood flow, and finally thiamine, because there's a probably a high likelihood that the patient is at risk of Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, specifically if it's from alcoholic liver disease. The main interventions include endoscopy to find and stop the bleeding, a balloon tamponade if this fails, an emergency TIPS procedure, which stands for transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt, which is basically like a temporary way for the portal vein to bypass the liver in order to reduce that backed up pressure. And finally, a liver transplant after doing the tips at some point down the line. Let's summarize all of this by running through our four mnemonics of four. There are four differentials of hematemesis other than varices. There are peptic ulcers, Mallory Weiss tears, esophagitis, and non-GI bleeds. There are four signs of liver cirrhosis, which could indicate varices, A, B, C, and D, which stand for ascites, bumblebee-colored skin, caput medusae, and a history of drinking. There are four drugs to treat varices, A, P, T, T, which stand for antibiotics, proton pump inhibitors, terlipressin, and thiamine. There are four interventions to consider, E, triple T, which stand for endoscopy, tamponade, then tips, then transplant. I think mnemonics are the best way to learn medicine, so you really should check out my other video on rhabdomyolysis for a bunch of memory tricks. Thanks for watching Townsend Teachings.